Hello and welcome to Unity Hill Uniting Church. My name is Reverend Nathan Willis and I'm the pastor of this congregation. And we are here today to give thanks to God for the life of Coral Mavis Benny and to affirm the Christian conviction that while death is the end of mortal life, it marks a new beginning in our relationship with God. We are also here to share the sorrow of those who mourn and to offer them our love and support. Cora was a deeply caring, community-minded person who had a deep concern and compassion for others. She related well with many people and often got alongside those who were hurting with words and acts of comfort and support. Sadly, on Wednesday, the 21st of December last year, Coral passed away at the age of 79. Coral was the loved wife of Alan and the caring mother and mother-in-law to Brett and Sonia and Melissa and Scott. She was also a former wife of Trevor and Coral was the much-loved granny to Sarah and Lucy, Jake and Kai. For us here at Unity Hill Uniting Church, Coral was our dear sister in Christ and she has been and will be greatly missed. And I have a statement from the previous minister, uh, Benji Callan, um, who um, Coral was quite fond of and vice versa from his statement. And Benji said this, Coral found her spiritual home at Unity Hill. It was a joy to be part of a journey of discipleship. Jesus said we must become like little children to enter the kingdom of heaven. Coral had a faith like that of a child, eager to grow and learn from others, to worship and to serve. She had humility and wonder when it came to her, her relationship with Jesus. I remember she came asking questions about connecting emotions and her growing faith. I suggested she read through the book of Psalms as there are many great examples of raw emotion and being very real towards God. I thought this may help her walk with Christ. She came back a fortnight later having read through the entire book all 150 Psalms. And back a fortnight later, oh sorry, and had many notes and many questions. At worship, she would be keen to take on any challenge to read, pray and worship. She loved Jesus and found in Unity Hill a family to be able to grow in that love as the Holy Spirit continued to refresh her heart and her mind. I remember her serving at the op shop with great passion and a big heart. She also wasn't shy of reminding me how slow my barista skills were. Her sense of humour, adventure, her heart to serve and her compassion led her to the UK and a new man in her life. They were soon married officially and in the eyes of God. She was always very keen that Alan was to learn just how important her spiritual home at Unity Hill was. They tried to find a place of worship together in their second home in the UK. This faith she had inspired Alan to grow also. It was a joy to observe. It is with confidence that we can say Coral is God's beloved. She experienced the grace, mercy, strength and kindness of Christ in many beautiful and encouraging ways. She is a beloved sister in Christ to us all. It is with thanks, praise and sadness that we shared in the unique light of Jesus that shone through Coral and it is with thanks that we acknowledge Jesus' sacrifice that allows Coral to experience the life everlasting. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Benji Callan. For many of us here today, Coral was also a, a great friend and she will be sorely missed. So as we remember who Coral was to us, and as we gather in community and in hope, I greet you in the name of God, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Apostle Peter wrote these words of hope for us in 1 Peter 1.3. 
He wrote, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Let's come before God in prayer. Let's pray. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, your love for us is everlasting. You alone can turn the shadow of death into the brightness of the morning light. By the power of the Holy Spirit, come to us in our darkness and distress with the light and peace of your presence. Speak to us now through your holy word that our faith may be strengthened and our hope sustained through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we're now going to stand, if you're able, and sing softly and tenderly, Jesus is Calling, one of Coral's favourite hymns. Let's stand and sing. I'd now like to invite Sarah, Coral's granddaughter, uh, to come forward and share some words and some thoughts and stories about Coral's life and who she was to us. Thanks, Sarah. Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us to celebrate Coral's life. I'm Sarah and this is Lucy, this is Jack Pye and this is Jake and we are Coral's granddaughters. Granny was born on the 2nd of March 1943 in Jamestown. She was the daughter of Mavis Edith and Hubert Clifford Wallace Bristow. Richard Alfred Dudley Bristow was the father she grew up with after the passing of Hubert when she was only four. Granny had three siblings, Brian, Graham and Pauline. She lived in Bellini North and moved to a farm at the age of 14 to Port Neal, later on moving to Port Lincoln. She met our papa Trevor at the Civic Milk Bar where they arranged a date at the local dance. Papa and Granny were married on the 25th of August 1962 where she was aged 19. When they went on their honeymoon to Mount Gambier they only stayed one night as it was too cold. 1966 saw her first and only son Brett born followed two years later by her daughter Melissa. The family enjoyed spending countless camping trips while the kids were growing up with close family friends on the coast at Trinity Haven. In 1989, Melissa married Scott Paul, where Granny very busied herself catering, then in 1992 married Sonia Bellamy. Brett married Sonia Bellamy, where she got to sit back and enjoy being catered and waited upon. She was blessed with four grandchildren, Jake, Kai, myself and Lucy. She had the great honour of being in attendance to welcome Kai into the world. Granny took on the proud role of taking us on all of our beach outings, overnight stays and attending all of our milestone events and achievements during our school years. Granny enjoyed endless volunteering roles beginning with running the school town team during our dad's and Arnie Melissa's primary years, moving on to numerous volunteering roles including the children's charity Novita, the Unity Hill Op Shop and culminating into partnering grief counselling walks to the Flinder Rangers which helped her find her happy place. After enjoying several new homes, she found herself and Papa residing on the waterfront, which was a long-term dream, where she was able to, at her leisure, spend countless enjoyable hours on her condor, paddling until her heart was content. Though Papa, through Papa and Dad's love and involvement of cricket with the Waybacks Cricket Club, Granny found herself having a large influence in the social activities, organising many club gatherings and being a pioneer of choreographing comedic skits with all the players' partners for many years, which are still laughed about and fondly remembered to this day. In 2010, after having separated from Papa, Granny was heading back from Western Australia on the Indian Pacific after visiting Pauline, whereby, through a chance of fate, her world collided with an English gentleman by the name of Alan Herbert Ayres. With the stars still aligning, they found themselves seated at the same dinner table where laughter and jokes abound. Unbeknownst to the two of them, it would be the beginning of a wonderful partnership. Fast forward a few years after travelling between the UK and Australia every six months or so, the partnership formalised into something stronger when Alan experienced, probably not for the first time or last time, some of Granny's strong will and ability to expedite matters, when to his surprise, 
She proposed and they married in Port Lincoln on the 8th of April 2017. After relocating to Alan's home in Waterlooville, where she was welcomed and well respected by her new family in the UK, she continued to fulfil herself by participating in her much loved volunteer work and helping at the Queen Alexander Hospital. She also became a regular and active member of their local Water Waterlooville Baptist Church. Throughout the course of the next four years, they continued to enjoy European holidays and returned home to Australia regularly. In 2018, they welcomed Melissa for an extended visit for her, um, for her to experience some of her mum's newfound joy, where a wonderful time was had. Unfortunately, soon world events prohibited any more of these visits, which we know had a lasting effect on Granny. June of 2020, sadly after Granny had a fall, she had the misfortune of beginning a new journey, being diagnosed and having to learn with us learn with us all how to live with dementia. Alan's best intentions to care for her at home were all too, too soon realised not to be an insurmountable task, but very quickly became a mountain which was proved too great to climb. Every effort to keep Granny where she was most happy unfortunately culminated with us having to commit her into care. Over the course of the next 18 months, Alan continued his undenying love to her to never be too far from her side, with regular home visits to be with her much loved dog love dog Misty Moon. We all had to learn how to love her in a challenging but rewarding new way. Granny, we are all with you on this journey, but sadly on the 21st of December we had to bid you your final farewells. We all miss you dearly even though you tried so hard, we know now that your love and fond memories will always be around us. We have now been able to welcome you back home and into our loving arms. Yes. <laughs> well, Sarah and Lucy, thank you very much for those uh, wonderful words. You painted a beautiful picture of who uh, Granny was. And uh, Kai and Jake, thank you for your support. <laughs> and uh, I'd now like to invite Alan to come forward um, and to share, he'd like to share some words um, about his beloved Coral. Is this the one here? Coral found her spiritual home at Unity Hill. No, that's, um, so, that's, that's Benji's. Did you, oh, have something to, did you have something written down? No. No. I've, I've gone through all this before at a cremation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whether I can get through this or not, I don't know. But I had a... At her cremation in the UK, I had a, nev a, a nephew of mine read the eulogy because I was volunteered for it, but I just couldn't make the stand. And I'm finding it very difficult now. <laughs> she was a wonderful woman. And although I'd been through the process once before, this had a different meaning because it was so close. Previously, it was another life. This was a new life for me and Coral, and we managed it quite well. I so miss her. And it's not the end of it because I shall be back. This is, I count as my second home. And my daughter's already said to me, don't come back with a third, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I couldn't go through it all again. My last in memories will be with Coral. Forever. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. Well done, Alan. And there's a lot of people who have said to me how much they miss Coral. Um, we're going to continue to remember Coral and.
reflect upon her life through a slideshow. And I've now asked Mary to just put that on the screen for us. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. now recall the promises of God to her and to us as recorded in scripture this is a selection of verses from the apostle Paul's letter to the Romans from chapter 8 and Paul wrote this said I, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed in us we know that all things work together 
for the good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son but gave him up for all us. Will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies, who is to condemn. It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Coral was a person who loved people and often walked alongside those who had experienced grief and trauma. And she did that quite literally through a, a walking group. And she did it metaphorically by being an empathetic presence and a listening ear. Coral did this because of her own experience of grief and because of her caring and compassionate nature. Every person has points of suffering and pain in their life. And every person needs someone like Coral who is understanding, empathetic and willing to walk alongside at some time or another. Today is a celebration of Coral's life, but it's also about acknowledging that our hearts are broken and that we today are experiencing pain and sorrow. The reading today, as I've said, comes from a letter written by the Apostle Paul to the church in Rome. And it was a message of hope in the midst of pain and suffering. Paul wrote, I consider our current suffering nothing compared to the glory that will be revealed in us. That the suffering that he and the Roman church was experiencing would pale in comparison to the promise of the eternal life that God has planned. At one level, it sounds like Paul might be trivialising suffering, making it nothing, dismissing it. And nothing is more infuriating than to have someone dismiss our point of pain. But that is not what is happening here. Paul is acknowledging the suffering of the church and that it was real suffering. He himself knew suffering. He had been flogged imprisoned, shipwrecked, and had been falsely accused on several occasions. But Paul could see a time ahead that was bright and glorious, and that the suffering that he and the church had been experiencing would one day fall away. Paul had the hope of a new creation, an everlasting resurrection life, where tears, sin, and death are no more, just joy and peace in the presence of God forever and ever. The Bible and its message is breathed, perhaps forged, in suffering and pain. It acknowledges it, doesn't dismiss it. It recognises the gamut of emotions and heartache that come with loss, but then also points to hope and new life again. At the centre of the Bible is the person Jesus Christ and the story of his suffering and his death but that he also rose again to new resurrection life. And the Bible teaches us that in Jesus Christ, God himself entered creation to experience the breadth of human life. That is to say, Jesus experienced the joy of friendship, family and companionship, but also the sting of betrayal and abandonment. 
Jesus knew the height of popularity and favour in the community, but also complete and utter rejection and humiliation. Jesus knew joy and times of celebration like the wedding at Cana, and he knew deep grief and loss. He wept when his friend Lazarus died. Jesus experienced the breadth of human life, but especially pain and suffering. Ultimately, Jesus experienced death and died on the cross in our place so that our sins could be forgiven and so that we might have a new relationship with God that brings us hope and life again. And this is why Paul writes, If a God like this is for us, then who can be against us? He who did not hold anything back from us but gave, gave us his son, Jesus Christ which really means God gave himself to us through Jesus Christ. God gave himself to us to be rejected and to be put to to death so that we might live. And the good news is that Jesus did not stay on the cross, nor did he stay in the grave. Instead, three days later, the tomb was found empty and Jesus was seen alive again by many. And Paul encountered this resurrected Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus and it turned his life upside down. And it was from this point that Paul had this confidence in God even when times were hard and when the suffering was great. It's through Jesus' life, death and resurrection that Paul makes these astonishing claims that he does in Romans 8. Who can condemn us? Who can be against us? And at the end, can anything separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus? Can hardship or persecution or sword or famine? In fact, Paul was convinced that nothing could separate us from the love of God through Jesus Christ. There is no suffering or hardship, no height or depth, no power or authority, nor anything else in all creation that could separate us from God's love. And importantly for for today... Paul says, neither life nor death can separate us from God's love for us through Jesus Christ. And the promise here is that God is here and with us, present in our suffering, in our points of pain, and that God wishes to lead us through it all into healing, hope, and new life again. For Coral, the promise is that death has not separated her from God's love and grace. For Coral trusted in Jesus Christ, who died for her and rose to give her new resurrection life. Can anything separate her from God's love? The Apostle Paul says no, not even death. And we can trust that God has been with Coral through her life. In points of triumph and joy, and in her points of deep suffering and pain and loss. God has loved her and led her into this new resurrection life where she is free of pain, free of sin and death, where tears are no more, only joy and peace for all eternity. She now sees the glory that will be revealed in us. And so as we grieve for Coral, I invite you to remember that nothing can separate you from God's love and that you can bring your grief and sorrow to God because he understands your pain, your heartache and that he wishes to walk alongside you through it all and into hope and new life again. Amen. And we're going to respond to this by singing a very apt song. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Let's stand and sing. And now let's give thanks to God for Coral and who she was to us. Let's come together in prayer. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for the many ways in which Coral shared her life with us and others in strength and in weakness in achievement and failure in the brightness of joy and the darkness of despair we remember her as one of us 
We thank you for the way Coral cared for others and for her kind and loving nature. We thank you for her compassion towards people, people, especially those who had experienced loss and grief, and for the support and comfort that she brought to many. We thank you for Coral's work in the community, for her involvement in the grief counselling walks, her work in the school canteen, and her support of the Waybacks Cricket Club. We thank you for Coral's faith and trust in you, for her fellowship and friendship here at Unity Hill, and that she was our dear sister in Christ. We thank you for Coral and Alan as a couple, for the love that they have shared, and for the time that, they have been, that they've had both here in Australia and in the UK. We thank you for the way that Coral cared and loved for Brett and Melissa as mum and for the wonderful memories that she leaves. We thank you for blessing Coral with grandchildren and for the blessing that Granny has been to them. We thank you that Coral is no longer suffering and that she is safe in your hands and that she is now renewed and made whole in peace and joy in your love forever and ever. So Lord, we pray for Coral's family and for all who mourn her passing. We pray that you would fill them with your spirit and bring them the reassurance, comfort and peace of your presence. Give them strength and courage for today and hope for tomorrow. Lead them back into life and deeds that bless the living. And finally, for the assurance that nothing can separate us from your love and for the blessings that we've received through Coral's life, we give you thanks and praise forever and ever. Amen. We're now going to commend Coral to God, which means that we're handing her over into God's loving care. So let's pray. Holy God, by your creative power, you have, you've given us life. And in your redeeming love, you have given us new life in Christ. So we commend Coral to your merciful care in the faith of Christ our Lord, who died and rose again to save us, and who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And I invite you now to join with me in the Lord's Prayer, which will be up on the screen. Let's pray. Our Father, who art heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We're going to sing our final song today, How Great Thou Art. I invite you to stand and sing with me. I'd now like to invite Brett forward, uh, Coral's son, just to share some words, some final words. Thanks, thanks Brett. Ah. Life is a journey, and my mum was certainly enjoying a complete one. Given all that she had to compete with in the end, it was still her journey, her place, her time. In her words, she had found a peace and didn't want us to mourn for her because she's gone, but she wanted us to be glad for her because she has been. So please don't be sad for mum, because believe me when I say, I've done enough of all of that for us in spades. 
Mum, you and I left nothing out, nothing to chance, but given all that you would endure in the end, I know you were comfortable here. So I feel you'll be listening, and even though it saddens me, this time I will have the last say. <laughs> it wasn't until later in life that Mum found her way back here to church and rekindled her faith, and we got to witness firstly her baptism and subsequent marriage to Alan. This became her spiritual home. If I can share with you one th small thing that I found cute um, with Mum was the very fact that even in her darkest of times or in the grips of her challenge with dementia, even though she couldn't convey what she was feeling or experiencing, it was still, please and thank you, and yes, that will be all right, all the way to the end. This is one trait I've inherited from your Mum, and I know it will continue to serve me exceptionally well. Uh, Mum lost some very close girlfriends in her life way too early in their own journey, which I know had a very profound and lasting effect on her. Uh, and having had found a spiritual home here within these very walls, I know she'll be with us and shortly hooking up with Jackie, Chrissy, and a very dearest Annie or Morty as we knew her. So Mum, I trust that you do reconnect and I'm certain that once again you'll all be kicking up a storm. Uh, if my mum had only one small flaw, it was the very fact that she was always trying to fix everyone and everything she perceived to be troubled. Mum knows of the burden I'm talking about and I kept telling her, stop worrying about stuff that's not your problem, but she wouldn't listen. She was one strong-willed human and I know that stressed her. So if I could endear uh, you all as I have and that's to lose any concerns you may have for things that are beyond your control, it's not healthy, it's hard. Uh, to this end, and as Mum eventually did, you may find your own peace, and I know the rest of the world will find it very easy to take good care of you. If I could touch on the union that um, Mum had with my dad, TB, uh, who currently is faced with his own health challenges, and I know it's troubling him that he can't be here today. Um, I need you to know, Mum, that uh, it's only because of this partnership with Dad that Sonia and I have been absolutely blessed with the two most precious gifts in Sarah and Lucy. And it's only as a result of this union with Dad that I've been able to experience and appreciate the absolute joy of being able to give and receive undivided and unequaled love. I feel complete and for this privilege, Mum, there are no words. Alan, I know you're carrying some guilt, mate, and a little self-doubt with all that's been before us. Please don't. It all began with that fortunistic train journey and Mum was absolutely where she wanted and needed to be. She was content and calmed. And if any of us here ever have the very fortune of experience one single little atom's worth of the uncompromising love, care, compassion and affection that this man had for my mum we'll all have enough for an eternal lifetime. It's my wish, Alan, that you find solace in the fact that my mum, your sweetheart, left this world a far better person and version of herself for having had met you and had you in her life. I wish you nothing but the best, mate. You are a superhuman. And this is not the end. So here we go, mum. I know you'll be dancing on the waves during the day and kissing the shore each and every morning and night. It is with the heaviest of heart but the cheekiest of grins that I say so long for now and thank you. You've blessed me with more than you could ever have known and that I could have ever imagined. I am in awe of how hard you tried and I also, in your own words, love you to the end of the universe. This now completes the circle of your earthly journey with us, so Mum, please rest in peace, uh, your boy Bertie. Um, and respectfully, I do thank you all for joining us today. Uh, I know Mum would be overwhelmed, so thank you. We're going to conclude the service today with a prayer and a blessing. But before I do so, as Brett has already said, Coral's family would like to thank you so much 
uh, for your love and support just by being here today. And they warmly invite you to afternoon tea uh, at the Waybacks Club Room. After the blessing, and be invited to come forward and maybe to spend some time um, at the table here by Coral, uh, with uh, Coral's family going first and, and then the congregation, and then we'll proceed uh, out of the church in that way. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Let's pray. Loving God, we long for peace. Peace to leave Coral with you. Peace to strengthen us for today and tomorrow. Peace with ourselves, with one another and with you. Grant us that peace which the world cannot give. Through Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. Friends, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.